men without cocks. You wouldn't find me fighting in an army if I had no cock. What's left to fight for? Touche, my friend. Too fucking shay. Well, that was quick. The season 7 of Game of Thrones has already ended. Unfortunately, we're just getting 7 episodes this time around instead of the usual 10. But we got tons of stuff to talk about. I'm not going to be able to talk about every single thing that happened in the episode because this was a huge episode. 80 minutes long. That is crazy. We've never had a Game of Thrones episode this long before. But it is a good reason why it's this long. It's just not simply long for the sake of being long. There's a lot of important and very, very interesting stuff that happens in this episode that I really want to get to. So I'm not going to talk about all of them, but I'm going to talk about the key things that I thought were most interesting to me. As the episode opens, you see Daenerys' army just pouring in towards King's Landing. And then, of course, you have that humorous conversation between Braun and Jamie. What's the point of fighting if you don't have a cock? And this brings me to where I think why this episode is probably my most favorite this entire season just because of all the dialogue conversations all these characters that we love have and plus all the character reunions that we get to see. It's basically just about every single major Game of Thrones character come together in one location. We've never really seen that happen before, despite a couple times in season one. But this time around, after everything that's happened in this series so far, and seeing all these characters come back together, it's a really nice treat. I mean, just to name a few, we get to see Bronn and Tyrion reunite. We get to see the Hound and Brienne. We have Tyrion and Podrick. And the Hound actually speaks to his brother again. You've become an even uglier fucker than I have. <laughs> We get to see Euron Greyjoy be a dick to Tyrion. I mean, that's nothing new. I kind of saw that coming because he's pretty much an asshole to everybody. And when those things flew in and landed and roared, everybody was just dead silent and just in awe. And Cersei actually looked a little bit scared. I mean, I'm telling you, she is very, very well at trying to hide her emotion as much as she can because she wants to maintain that level of tyranny above everybody else. But when shit hits the fan, it's hard for her to hide her fear. This is especially true with that part where the hound just brings up that box and he's slowly opening it and you're just waiting. You're like, oh man, it's going to pop out. It's going to pop out. It's going to pop out. And then it goes quiet and you're just like, okay, is it going to come out? And then all of a sudden, the hound just kicks the box over and the white just runs out. <laughs> and then Cersei just goes... Again, she's really trying not to show any fear, but it's hard because... This is basically a childhood story she was told about that she always thought was a fantasy. Now she's seeing it before her very eyes like, holy crap, White Walkers, the Army of the Dead, they're all real. Oh boy. And I just love how Jon takes the arm and he's like, look, if you use a regular sword, it ain't gonna work. You use fire, it'll work. Or dragon glass, that'll work too. And at this point, Euron basically becomes the biggest pussy in Westeros and goes, can they swim? No? Good, I'm out. And then Cersei basically tells Jon, hey, we'll sign a truce with you if you bend the knee to me. Where he basically goes, no, I can only bend the knee to one queen. I've already bent the knee to Daenerys, so there's no way I can bend the knee to you too. And this, of course, makes Cersei pissed off. She leaves with the whole group, and then everybody gets pissed at Jon, like, why did you do that? Why are you such a loyal, nice person? And I'm like, well, he is kind of the only loyal genuinely nice person left in Westeros there is, if you think about it. Not even Daenerys, because, you know, she did kind of murder people a couple episodes ago. But everyone's all pissed at him, and he's like, well, what's the point of oaths if words mean nothing? And I'm like, ah, I hear a bit of Ned Stark in that voice. He's got his father in him. All right, I see where they're going. I just kind of found it annoying that everyone was getting super pissed off at John, which I could understand why, but at the same time, it was like, why didn't you just lie to him, John? Why didn't you just lie and say that you were going to bend the knee? And I'm like, well, I'm pretty sure if he was lying, she'd find out eventually, and it wouldn't turn out well. So either way, it's a no-win situation no matter what you decide to choose. And then Brienne and Jamie talk for a bit, and I love their conversation. Fuck loyalty! This isn't about oaths or honor. This is about living. I was like, yeah, you tell him. And then you kind of see Jamie's expression where he's starting to slowly realize, hmm, maybe I shouldn't stick around with my sister because she's not exactly the brightest up here. 
Not a good idea. Hmm. I wonder where my loyalties lie. And then we get to one of my most favorite scenes in the entire episode where Tyrion talks to Cersei. Or more like Tyrion confronts Cersei is the better word for it because they just go at it with each other dialogue-wise. He's just telling her, I killed our mother, I killed our father, I caused the deaths of your children. And he just walks over right to the mountain and he goes, if you're going to kill me, then just order it already. And I was just like, damn, he is not holding anything back. He's just laying it, letting it all out. And sometimes that is what you got to do to get your point across. Sure enough, he does. He returns with Cersei and everybody else. And she goes, all right. I'll lend you a truce, and um, when the time comes, we'll fight alongside you against the army of the dead. But while she's saying this, you just kind of go in the back of your mind like, uh, I don't know, something smells fishy, this don't sound right, quite right. Which, of course, gets revealed later in the episode that she's going to betray all of them, and at the same time, you're like, Ooh, what a surprise there. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to let all my enemies die. And I love Jamie's common sense argument. He's like, uh... If we don't do anything, the army of the dead will kill the living and they're going to come here and kill all of us. If we do help them and end up killing the army of the dead and then break the truce, the living are going to come back and kill us. So either way, we're fucked. Why don't we just sign a truce with them, put aside our petty differences, and just live as one people. But Cersei can never agree with this and she's basically threatening Jamie at this point and he's like, Done. He just leaves King's Landing, and I love that shot where he leaves, and you can see King's Landing as the snow starts to fall down on it. He looks at his glove, he sees a snowflake go onto it, and the shot of King's Landing where it's just it really showing that winter is coming, you're just like, oh boy, they've been saying it the entire series, and now we're actually seeing it. So that was really cool to see, because when you think of King's Landing, you think of bright, colorful, hot things like that, but now it's completely one opposite. It was dark, it was cold, and you started to see the snow fall, so that was really good. That was a nice uh, metaphor of things to come. We also got a really good dialogue scene between Jon and Theon in this episode, which I didn't see coming at all, but I really am glad they put it in here, because Jon basically says, Greyjoys, Starks, doesn't matter what loyalty you pick. You can be together. We can always be together as they have for thousands of years. And sure enough, Theon goes to his men and says, Let's go after my sister. I want to be a man and I want to try to help her. But his men aren't listening to him. They're basically calling him a coward because when Euron had his sister captive, he ran away like a pussy. And then he has a brief melee fight. And I just love that part where that dude is just kneeing him in the nuts and then Theon doesn't feel anything. He's like, what the... Why isn't this working? You should be on the ground in pain because I'm hitting your balls. Why is nothing happening? And then he wins the fight. And I was like, yeah, that's that's a good sign. It's a good metaphor of Theon starting to really become a man, if you will. Even though he was a man before, then wasn't because he got his cock chopped off. And now he's, I don't know. It was a good scene. <laughs> and then we cut back to Winterfell with Sansa, Arya, and Lord Baelish. They start having this meeting. And then Sansa calls Arya into the courtroom. And then Arya's like, are you sure you want to do this? I was like, she's not talking to Arya, is she? Ooh. And sure enough, Sansa starts reading off charges. And then she just goes, do you understand these charges, Lord Baelish? And he's freaked out. He's like, what? Oh, crap. They know everything. It's most likely thanks to Bran knowing a lot. And as this plays out, you can just see Lord Baelish get really, really nervous. He's looking at his men. He's like... I, as the commander of the Vale, order you to take me back to safety. And they're like, no, no, it all makes sense now. We're not helping you out anymore. And Sansa just says, thank you for all the lessons you taught me, Lord Baelish. I'll never forget them. And Arya cuts his throat. Littlefinger is dead. He is gone. No more Littlefinger. So in a way, I am kind of sad that we got to lose such a really interesting character. But at the same time... He didn't really do a whole lot these past couple of seasons. He was just kind of there to try to manipulate people. And moreover, honestly, I didn't really care for this whole Winterfell story arc. I thought it was kind of dragging along. So I am kind of happy they decided to wrap that up. It is kind of sad to see a major character go, but I think they kind of have to do that in order to progress the story for the War of the Dawn in Season 8. So in a way, 
It is sad, but I also think it's the right choice. And then towards the end of the episode, we get boat sex. Yeah, we, we, we all saw it coming. We knew John was going to go to Daenerys. Sure enough, they do. They have a love scene on a boat. And as this is playing on, I actually really enjoyed this part. Bran is narrating John's true heritage. And as this goes on, Sam goes, hey, I read about a document that says that Lyanna was annulled from her marriage. So wait a second, if we put two and two together, John is the father of Rhaegar Targaryen. And Bran goes back to that scene where Lyanna just gave birth to John in the Tower of Joy, and she whispers in Ned's ear, and now we finally hear everything she says when she whispers it. So happy they did that. That pissed me off last season that we couldn't hear what she said. But sure enough, a lot of the fan theories was correct. She said his name is Aegon Targaryen. And I was like, yes, R plus L equals J fucking confirmed. What? What? So I'm really excited for the pilot of season eight because we're finally going to get John's true heritage revealed to him. It's going to be epic, but it's also going to be pretty scary if you think about it because John's the king of the north and the people in the north want nothing to do with the Targaryens. So how are they going to react when they find out that John's actually Targaryen? And holy shit, how is Daenerys going to react when she finds out he's a Targaryen? Is she going to be like, wait a second, if you're the son of Rhaegar, then that means you're my nephew. And oh, fuck. We just had sex on a boat recently. We just committed incest. Ah! Or is she going to be like, oh, well, we had sex recently. So no worries, because since we're related, we're in the same family bloodline. They allocate the Targaryen bloodline fresh because they've always had incest in their family for generations. So no worries. We're good. You want to have sex later, John? Either way, I'm super excited to see how that plans out in season eight. I thought that was a really good way to try to close off the episode. But sure enough... The very last scene we get is the Night King with the undead dragon. The dragon is breathing blue fire. I thought that was so sick to look at. It was like, oh, badass. It's sad because it's Viserion. He died and that's sad. But he blew up the wall. It's so epic. <laughs> and the final shot just shows the army of the dead just swarming in past the wall, walking south into Westeros, and it ends. And I thought that was a perfect way to really end the season, to really show you of what's to come in Season 8. And I am pretty bummed that Season 8 is going to be even shorter, but if every other episode is going to be this huge, crazy action scenes like we've never seen in the series before, then I'm all for it. So overall, I have to say this was my favorite episode in the entire season. As far as the season as a whole goes, Really, if you've been a long time Game of Thrones fan, you kind of notice a change in trend a little bit. The first six seasons, while there were some points where it was pretty fast paced, the series for the most part has kind of taken its time with its characters to try to develop them so that you can kind of develop a relationship with these characters. Season seven felt I wouldn't say rush, but faster paced. The constant moving around in different locations very quickly didn't bug me too much. At first, I was a little bit confused. I was like, so, wait, how much time passed? I don't get it, what? But as it went on, you realize that pretty much the whole season is faster paced, so you kind of, at least for me, I kind of got over them jumping from location to location pretty quickly. But one thing I really don't understand is a lot of these really pivotal scenes within the season for example the scene in uh, episode five when Tyrion is meeting Jamie. that scene both of them are incredible actors and they both I thought did extraordinary well in that scene however that scene was only like two and a half three minutes ish long that was it I thought that could have been easily a 10 minute scene and that's why the John meeting Daenerys in this season was probably one of my most favorite scenes of the whole episode because it took its time. It didn't rush through anything. It went from how they met each other up until when John left that room. So really it took its time with that scene. It was like it was pretty long. It was like a 9 10 minute long scene and I really enjoyed it because of how good the dialogue was and it took its time developing these characters to meet each other because it's so crucial for these characters to work with one another. A lot of these really other important scenes throughout the season where characters reunite are quick and I was like I bet if they sort of drew those out a bit longer they could have extended this season to 10 episodes 
So I'm wondering if it's because they're trying to rush along very, very quickly to try to save money as much as they can that they shorten it to seven episodes. But at the same time, it's like, if you slow down a little bit and really take your time, go in depth with these characters, you can likely extend this season to 10 episodes. And I'm kind of interested to see what they're going to do. Is it going to be even more fast paced or we're not going to get much character development whatsoever besides John's heritage? We're not sure what we're going to do with that because a lot of our beloved characters are being killed off or we're done developing them and we're just kind of throwing them into an action set piece at this point. So I'm kind of curious to see how a season eight plots out either way. I'm really, really hyped for it. Season 7, I wouldn't say is bad, just not my favorite, but it did have some really badass moments within this season. I would love to see what you guys thought of Season 7, as well as what you think is going to happen in Season 8. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Be sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed my review and discussion of this episode and season. And as always, be sure to subscribe. I'll see you guys in Season 8. Woo! I have no idea what that was. That's my Game of Thrones pose, I guess. Should that be the thumbnail? No, let's not do that.